Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. The Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl. The first bowl game to ever be named after a person. Provides a very intriguing matchup between Utah State and Oregon State. Two teams in the midst of a very historic season. Two teams looking to end those historic seasons on a high. And we are here to predict this L.A. Bowl and tell you everything you need to know, everything that is going to happen between the Aggies and the Beavers. So again, guys, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We are so glad you could join us today. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And check out everything down in the description below, especially our expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com. You know, all of our videos here, we are predicting these games straight up. And we are going to be predicting every single bowl game. But if you want to pick against the spread for every single bowl game, you need to go over to thegridironexpert.com right now and sign up. Because not only will you get those picks, but you're going to win off of those picks. Some of the best picks in the country for one of the lowest prices in the country. We are beating out 80% of the national analysts. We had over 60% of our bowl bets last year. Take advantage of it now. It's a year-long subscription. If you buy now, you'll get it all the way through 2022 as well. It's an offer unlike any other. So again, the expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com. Never too late to sign up, but make sure you do it before bowl games start on Friday so you don't miss out on any of our picks and you don't miss out on making that money. So let's take a look, guys. Utah State, Oregon State. We said both these teams were in the midst of a very historic season. Why is that? Well, let's start with Utah State. The Aggies are 10-3. and They just won their first Mountain West Conference title in nine years. And they did it in year one, the first year under a brand new head coach in Blake Anderson, who left Arkansas State to become the head coach at Utah State. So this Aggies team, really, what they've done, it was unprecedented. No one saw Utah State coming and doing what they did. Winning the Mountain West for the first time in nine years. Winning seven of their final eight games. And again, to do it all with a transfer quarterback and a brand new head coach. Insanely impressive. Same can be said for Oregon State, though, guys. What a year it's been for Jonathan Smith. The Beavers are 7-5, and five, making their first bowl game since 2013. The season started strong. They started 4-1, and one, won at USC. They beat Utah, who ultimately won the Pac-12. They beat Arizona State, and they were competitive in all of their games. Yes, they did lose five games, but the largest margin of defeat was 14 points. So a lot of close games, a lot of competitive games for the Beavers. This program obviously trending in the right direction under Jonathan Smith, of course, back at his alma mater. So let's start on the offense, and we'll start with Utah State, the designated road team for this Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl. And you look at Utah State, guys, what is their offense about? It's all about the pass game. It's all about throwing the football. Logan Bonner was the former quarterback at Arkansas State. He transferred to Utah State to be with his head coach in Blake Anderson, and he has thrived. The Aggies are averaging 305.8 passing yards per game. Logan Bonner has thrown for over 3,500 yards, 36 touchdowns, and just 11 interceptions. Their top wide receiver, Devin Tompkins, has recorded 96 receptions for over 1,500 yards and 9 touchdowns. This offense is averaging 33.2 points per game. They scored at least 26 points in those 7 games that they won in their final 8, including a 46-13 defeat of San Diego State, a nationally ranked team in the Mountain West Championship game. The Aggies, yes, are averaging 146.4 rushing yards per game. So the rushing attack is there. They are capable of running the ball. That's obviously something that they do not want to do that often. Uh, when in doubt, they're going to throw. The run game is there. The run game, it's a factor. You know, you throw, throw, throw. You know, you might take a little draw in there, delayed handoff in there, and pick up about 10, 12 yards. But Blake Anderson and this Aggies team, they want to throw, and they want to go, and they want to go fast. When you look at Oregon State and their offense, they're extremely balanced. They do want to run, though. The Beavers are averaging 32.8 points per game, an amazing statistic for a Beavers team and an offense that in years past has struggled mightily. 213.1 passing yards per game, 217.4 rushing yards per game. It's about as even and balanced as you can get. Their sophomore quarterback, Chance Nolan, has played great, thrown for over 2,400 yards and 19 touchdowns, but the true workhorse for Oregon State is B.J. Baylor, their running back. He's rushed for over 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns, has six 100-yard rushing games. And like we mentioned, you know, Utah State can run the ball. That's not the number one. 
Oregon State, they do want to run the ball. They want to run. They want to run early. They want to run often. They're going to try to do everything they can to exploit this Utah State defense early. They're going to do everything they can to do it. So B.J. Baylor has been the workhorse, and you can expect another potential big day from him on the ground against a Utah State defense that has been mediocre against the run this season. When you look at Utah State, they're only allowing 25.3 points per game, but they're giving up 162.6 rushing yards per game. That's not a great number. Not a great number when you're going up against a team that's averaging over 200 rushing yards per game, right? That's not necessarily encouraging. But numbers can be skewed. Keep in mind that earlier in the year, Utah State faced Air Force way earlier in the year. I think allowed 437 yards in that game. An Air Force team that all they do is run, right? Utah State didn't win that game. The Aggies have gotten better against the run lately. As the season's gone on, they've gotten better. They've only allowed over 100 rushing yards twice in their final six games. They allowed over 300 yards to Wyoming, a loss for them. They only allowed 148 yards to San Diego State uh, in their Mountain West Championship game. Oregon State, though, as we mentioned, poses one of the biggest rushing threats the Aggies have faced all year. One of the biggest rushing threats they have faced all year. So this Aggies team has to be ready to slow them down. And really the key for Utah State is going to be making Oregon State one-dimensional. Because they're only allowing 228.4 passing yards per game. That's not a horrible mark. If they can force Chance Nolan to win this game through the air, and they can slowly but surely take away B.J. Baylor. Not saying come shut him down completely. Maybe hold him to under 100 yards. Don't let you know Oregon State hit. Really, for me, if I'm if I'm Utah State, the magic number is 170. Hold Oregon State to about 170 rushing yards or less. They do that. I think they can win this game. Make Oregon State one-dimensional and force Nolan to win the game through the air. Something he is capable of, but obviously something with a team that is balanced as Oregon State is, something they do not want to do. They want to be able to hit you from either way, not just one way. Oregon State defensively, they allow just 25.9 points per game. The big number that I'm looking at is the 241 passing yards per game they're allowing. Obviously, when you're going up against a team that's averaging over 300 passing yards per game with Logan Bonner and Aggies, that's a concern. So the secondary is going to be the the, the main focus here if you're Oregon State. It's a battle between uh, Utah State's passing attack and Oregon State's rushing attack here, even though the Beavers, we, as we said, are balanced and can throw the ball. So the question is, can they stop Logan Bonner? The Beavers are also allowing 146.7 rushing yards per game. And I'm looking at one key stat here, guys. We said that Oregon State, they lost five games all year long. They lost five games all year long, right? But there's a common trend in a lot of these games. Look at the numbers here. And their loss against Oregon, they lost by nine. They allowed 506 yards in that game. Were outrushed, outrushed 231 yards to 85 yards. Against Colorado, they lost in overtime. Yes, they rushed for 220 yards. But the Buffaloes had 222. They were outrushed. Against California, they allowed 517 total yards. Were outrushed 255 yards to 134 yards. Against Washington State, they allowed 491 yards. The Beavers outrushed the Cougars, but were outgained in the passing game, 399 to 158. And against Purdue, they were outrushed by 10 yards, 88 to 78. Outgained in the passing game, 313 to 285. All five losses you have seen Oregon State become one-dimensional. A very balanced offense, right? A very balanced offense. But in all five losses, what has the other team done? They have taken away one important aspect. Whether it's the passing game or the running game, they have found a way to limit one aspect of Oregon State's offense. If you can take them just one, stop the run, which most of these teams did, at least out-dueling them on the ground, I should say. Or if you can at least stop the pass. One-dimensional. Make Oregon State one-dimensional. You have a good chance to win this game. That kind of goes back to our key for Utah State. And that kind of goes back to what we're talking about here with Oregon State's defense. So again, a battle between the Aggies passing attack, the Beavers rushing attack. Which one wins the day? And at the end of the day, really, which defense wins the day? We're talking so much about offense. A lot of points could be scored in this L.A. Bowl. So which defense comes through and steps up big? Which defense comes through and steps up big. Our final prediction here, guys, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But to answer that question, I'm going to go with Utah State. I'm going to go with the Mountain West champions here. And I am expecting a lot of hate from Oregon State fans. I typically get it anyways. And I will say right now that we missed the mark drastically on the Beavers. A phenomenal season for Jonathan Smith. They exceeded my expectations, uh, making their first bowl game since 2013. But in this game, guys, I believe that Utah State's passing attack is the difference. I believe it's the difference. I believe Logan Bonner is going to play a very, very clean game. 
I believe the Aggies defense has gotten better what seems every single week is able to limit Oregon State in the passing game or the rushing game. They are able to make them one-dimensional. They are hot. They have won seven of their last eight games. They got hot down the stretch. They carry tons of momentum in from that blowout victory over San Diego State, a good San Diego State team. I believe they have enough to slow down B.J. Baylor in this run team, and I believe Oregon State secondary ends up being their weakness. Logan Bonner picks them apart in a close game, a relatively close game. One that I believe can feature lots of points. I'm going to go with Blake Anderson in his first year with the Aggies to win the L.A. Bowl, the inaugural Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl, and clinch an 11-win season. An 11-win season for Blake Anderson at Utah State in year one in what should be a thriller out in L.A. But we're going with the Aggies over the Beavers. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share our videos. And of course, check out everything down in the description below. Again, we are picking winners straight up here. If you want spread picks for every single bowl game, go to thegridironexpert.com right now and sign up for those expert picks. Again, every single bowl game will be predicted there, and we will have NFL predictions for the rest of the regular season and every single playoff game for the NFL as well. So take advantage of those picks now. It's a year-long subscription. You get it now. You get it through all of 2022. So take advantage of it. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.